All right, here we go. Let's first start parallel lines. Parallel lines. Uh, first, let me go over symbol for parallel. Anybody know the symbol for parallel? Maybe you used it before. Hey. What type of lines? I could go any type. I don't need arrows. You said two lines. You know, I could go like that. I could go like that. I could go like that. They're all, all lines are straight. I'm going to make it difficult on you. You are right. It's two lines, but they're vertical. Two vertical lines. All right. So everyone take a look. Symbol for parallel. Two vertical lines. Okay. So instead of writing the word parallel all the time, that's what we'll do right there. We'll put that symbol. Looks like an 11. Okay. Looks like the number 11. Uh, the picture I'm going to have you draw. Can you draw my cube from yesterday, please? I'm going to draw a cube again. And we're going to label each corner again with the letter. All right, two things have to happen for parallel. I know most of you guys, did you guys talk about parallel lines last year? Maybe slopes are the same, that type deal? Maybe, all right, if not, no big deal. For lines to be parallel, number one, they have to be on the same plane. Again, remind you from yesterday how many planes are on my diagram. Okay, so these two lines have to be on one of those six planes, and here's the second thing, they can't intersect. Okay, parallel lines never intersect. So again, I want you to focus on one plane for me, like yesterday. Focus on one out of six planes. Give me two lines from your plane that do not intersect. That do not intersect, please, so we can write them down. Give me a pair of lines that you think are parallel on that diagram. Six, where are we going with this? Jackson, I think you got two. Okay, A, B, B, C, right? You're giving me, when you say A and B, B and C, it sounds like you're giving me points. A, B, B, C. Okay, because I'm assuming you're talking about here, right? Uh, I said A, B. Oh, A, D, and which one? B, C. B, C. Okay, I'm good there. All right, ready to write it now? Let's write it symbolically. He said A, D, so I put line A, D, and he also gave me line B, C. But I'm not putting a comma in between them. I want, to, I want you to tell me they're parallel. We don't write the word parallel. We have a symbol for it now. So in between those two lines now, I should see my parallel symbol. This is where I need you to be. This notation. Okay, this notation right here. All right, give me one more pair. We're in above average math class. Give me one more pair of lines up here you think are parallel on my cube. Whoo, 10, I'll get there. Taylor? Um, A, H, yep. D, E. Perfect, A, H, D, E, I'll take it. So line A, H is parallel to line E, you said ED, right? Yes. Okay, ED, perfect. And we put the parallel symbol. Okay, now I'll take a new diagram in your groups. I'll give you about a minute. It shouldn't take too much longer. Give me a line that's parallel to AC, line that's parallel to EF, and a line that's parallel to AD using this diagram right here. Go ahead in your groups, talk to each other, breathe, show signs of life. Give me a line that's parallel to each of those in my diagram. They have to be in the same plane and they cannot intersect. All right, here you go. Give me a, what do you got parallel to AC? There's not, not like yesterday where there's a ton of responses. There's only one here, All right? There's only one that it could be. So give me a line, give me the line that's parallel 
to AC, 19, where are we going with that one? Zoe, parallel to AC? Yeah. Great job, so I have line DF. All right, what about parallel to EF now? Parallel to EF up here, 16, Alexandra. EBC, great work. And let's finish this off strong, something that's parallel to AD in that diagram. Parallel to AD, 17, gonna go, oh, look at that, back to back, that's cute. Aridu, what do you have? CF, got it. All right, everybody good? Questions, comments, concerns? Parallel lines. New symbol, everyone's all right with the new symbol. All right, this might, this next one, I think, is the toughest uh, vocabulary term that I'm going to give you all together. All right, it just doesn't make sense until you, until you see what I'm talking about. All right, skew lines. Here's the deal with skew lines. Number one, they can't be on the same plane. Cannot be on the same plane. All right, I'm just going to put, you don't have to do this, but I'm just putting a one so it can't be on the same plane. Number two, they can't be parallel. And three, this is really what blows my mind and probably yours too, they can't intersect either. How is that possible? That they're not parallel and they can't intersect. If they're not parallel, they have to intersect, right? Watch, watch the magic now for skew lines. I'm gonna use my cube here. Might wanna help me out here. Huh? Hold that up for me. Hopefully you got some good shoulder strength there. All right, here's what I'm talking about. Everyone see my first line right there? All right, there's my first line. Now watch. I'm going to put a second line. Are these two on the same plane right now? No, they're on two totally different planes of the six you know are here. Are they parallel? And here's the key. What's the third part? They can't. Do you see what I mean by they can't intersect? This is like 3D here, three-dimensional. Everyone see they're never going to intersect. All right, so these two would be skew lines. Not on the same plane. Right? Not parallel, and they're never going to intersect. You might draw it on your paper and they intersect, but that's two dimensional. You got to think of it as three dimensional here. Is everyone okay with they're never going to intersect the way I have them right now? Good? Because you're going to try some out here. How's that shoulder? Good? Yeah. Dog right, you're a beast. Any other questions? We're good? All right, thanks. All right, so go ahead right now. Name a segment that you think is skewed to AC. Can't be on the same plane. So that eliminates A, B, and B, C. Cannot be parallel, so that eliminates D, F. All right, so what else do we have here so it won't intersect in three-dimensional space A, C? All right, see if you can find a line segment for me. This is the toughest one, I think, to visualize with the not intersecting part. You think you have one before I let you go on the next two. You think you have one that's skew? Where am I going here? Taylor, back to you. Skew to AC. BE, yeah. Again, now look, again, this is what I'm talking about. I don't want you to get fall in this trap. Oh, AC, BE, on, they intersect. This is two dimensional you're doing here, drawing these lines. You got to think of it as if I put it in front of you, put a pencil on AC, put a pencil on BE, those bad boys are never intersected. Okay? Those are never intersected. Good job. So BE, and then go ahead and do five and six. Find skew lines to those two. So don't draw it on your paper. They're always going to intersect. Yeah. For this one here, for AC, EF would also work. Yes, there's, there's a couple answers here we could have. All right, here we go, EF. And again, there's multiple answers here. Something that is skew to EF. Skew to EF, Sydney? DA. DA, let's see, DA, not on the plane, not parallel. EF's going this way, DA's gonna go behind it. Perfect, I'll take DA. How about the next one, AD? I don't know if anybody sees this, but I'll ask anyway. Something skew to AD, what do you have there, Zoe? What do you have? Yeah. Yeah, good job, right? Everyone looks at five and six. They're skewed to each other, so yeah. 
And there's again, there's other responses. All right, as long as it's not on the same plane and it's not parallel and they're not going to intersect. Any questions on skew, parallel? All right, let's move on. Uh, parallel planes, I I'm not going to have you draw the cube again. Two planes that don't intersect. If I go back, go back, everyone take a look at the original picture I have up here. All right, I'll just do one here for us. Uh, if we had two parallel planes, I could say it's this plane right here. Everyone agree with the bottom plane, right? Or the one on the left to the right. Everyone good, front and back. Again, what review from yesterday, how you name a plane because I don't have a capital letter in the corner. How would I name this plane up here? Usually how many letters? How many letters to name a plane? Three that don't form a line, right? Three that don't form a line. So plane HGB, plane EDC are parallel to each other. So going back to my diagram here, can you write two parallel planes for me right now? Two parallel, there's only one pair up here. So give me plane whatever, parallel to plane whatever up there. Go ahead, using this diagram right here. Got to name it with three letters though. Name it with three letters. Give me the planes that you think are parallel up there. And what are those two planes? You can only name it with three letters. There's only three letters up there. Uh, Alexander, here we go. What do you got? Plane, plane A, B, C, up, and D, E, F. Let's make sure we use our new symbol, right, to show it's parallel to plane D, E, F. Good. And that's the only pair you could give me. All right, that's the only pair you could give me. All right, I'm going to go slow down a little bit now. How can a line and a plane be parallel? Wait, I know how two lines can be, and I definitely understand how two planes can be parallel. But how can I get a line and a plane parallel? Here's how. Alexander just gave me those two planes parallel to each other, right? So we can take one plane. Let's take plane ABC. Plane ABC will be parallel to, ready? Look at the other plane it was parallel to and take any line from it. Those two will be parallel. So if two planes are parallel, one plane is parallel to any line in the other plane. Let me say that again a little slower. If two planes are parallel, which we have up there, one plane is always parallel to any other line in the other plane. Makes sense. So I, all right, I could say plane ABC is parallel to, give me a line from the other uh, plane that it's parallel to up here. Uh, eight, Sydney, anything parallel to? I have D, plane DEF, right? These two are parallel. So plane ABC is going to be parallel to any line in the other plane. So just give me any line in the other plane. DE. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, let's go backwards then. Plane DEF is going to be parallel. Give me a line that DEF should be parallel to. So I know we're good here. Plane D, E, F is going to be parallel to which one of uh, three lines up here? Oh, Sydney again, doubles. Fine, A, C. Could have used anything from plane A, B, C. Makes sense when two, a plane and a line. The planes have to be parallel first before a plane and a line can be. All right, any questions there? Because now I'm going to get, I'm not fired up yet. This is my favorite part coming up here. Now we mix in some algebra. Let's see if we have any algebra studs in the house here. Oh, I love it. Love this part. Remember yesterday I, when I did line and I got real fired up here and I said, darn it, you better have arrows on it. Because if you don't, it's called something else. Here's that something else. A line segment. All right. You take the arrows off a line. That's what you end up with. A line segment. A line segment consists of two points, endpoints. That's a line segment, a line without the arrows. You guys know how to write a line now, right? We've been writing a ton of them since yesterday. How do I write a line segment? Very similar. There's the symbol, a smaller one. And then what do I put underneath? The two endpoints. I don't care what order you do it in, but you got to put the two endpoints on there. 
Watch, unlike yesterday, let me just put a random point on XY. Let me put an M there. I can't call this whole thing XM because everyone see that's a different line segment. Here's XM, line segment XM. This is XY. So you have to put the endpoints underneath. See the difference between XM versus XY? That's a smaller segment and XY is the bigger one. All right, all good? All right, here's why this is my favorite part because I get to see if you actually can draw this stuff for me now. All right, I'll give you a set of directions. Can you actually draw it? So I have draw, what's that symbol above? Line segment EG, go ahead, draw line segment EG for me. Which means where are you putting E and G? On the end points, hopefully, on the end points. Okay, keep reading. F is a point on the segment. Does it say where? No. So it's a, F is a point somewhere on the segment. Put point F somewhere. On, excuse me. Put point F somewhere on there. Anywhere. Doesn't matter. All right. Now, some new notation. If EG. Now, look, look, look. What did I drop off of EG? What's not there anymore? The line segment. So when the line segment symbol gets dropped, they're telling you how long it is, the length of it. So by dropping the line segment symbol in EG, I'm now telling you, take a look, this whole bad boy is 100 units long. All right? I don't care how you label that, but no, it's 100 units long. I do this. So this whole thing, you do whatever floats your boat. But that whole thing for me is 100 units long. EF. Notice I dropped the line seg no line segment symbol, so they're telling you the length. EF is 4x minus 20. All right, find where EF is on your diagram. That length, 4x minus 20. The length of FG, 2x plus 30. Write it on there. There's the length. All right, I'm, now I need three. There's three parts to this question. Knowing all this information, what's the value of X, EF, the length of EF, and the length of FG? Actual numbers. All right, don't tell me, oh, EF is uh, 4X minus 20. No, no, I want like, it's 50 units long. It's 25 units long, right? That's what I want. So the first thing we need to come up with, going back to our algebra days, I need an equation to solve for X. All right, knowing all this information up here, this part's 4X minus 20, that's 2X plus 30, and that's 100. I need something that gonna, you're going to set up that's going to solve for X. First, whoa, geez, this will give me drive me nuts. Did I ever say that EF and FG are equal? Ever say that up there? No, so don't write it down that those two are equal. Don't tell me 4X minus 20 equals 2X plus 30. There's nothing up there that says they're equal to each other. All right, I'll give you 30 seconds talking to your group. Can you come up with an equation within your group to solve for X using all this information I have up here? Use it all. Do you have, can you set up an equation to solve for X? 30 seconds and I'll ask a group how they did. Okay, here we go. How'd a group do here? How'd we do in our groups? 13. Where's group 13 here? 13. 13. I'll get it. There we go. How'd your group do, Jesse? Best group in the nation? What do we think? Uh, 4, 4, x minus 20. Uh, the x equals 5. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to know what it, What did you guys set up to solve for x? 4x minus 20 plus 2x plus 30. Look, this segment... Plus the other one, FG, is equal to the whole thing, which we know is 100. Makes sense, right? Once EF plus FG, I put them together, I get the whole thing EG, which is 100. That's where I need you to be here. Questions? All right, from here, honestly, I can't help you from here. I'm hoping you're in this class because you could solve something like this pretty easily, all right? Hopefully you're in this class for a reason, that's why. So I'm not even going to go over solving this. I got 6x plus 10 when I combine my like terms 
equals 100. I move the 10 over. Hopefully this is not foreign what I'm doing here. I just I don't, definitely don't have time to solve a equation with you. Equals 90, divide both sides by six. We get 15. Oh, good. Questions on how we set up the equation, because you're going to do a couple of those tonight. So I got 15. That's, ha that's a third of the problem. The other third is, okay, what's EF and FG? So now knowing X is 15, how do you find EF? What can I do? Oh, relax. How can I find EF? Are you, what are you going to do to, with 15 to find EF? What do we label EF as? Um, yeah, what do we label it as? What do we put on it as its length? Oh, 4x minus 1. Okay, do I know x now? 15. All right, what can I do with it now? So 4 times 15 minus 20. Plug and chug, substitution, right? Everyone, plug and chug. So EF is going to equal 4 times 15 minus 20. And what's that, 40? And now FG, there's a couple ways to find FG. You don't have to use substitution here, but you could. But let me know how you're going to find FG here. FG, 12, going deep there. Lenu, how are you going to find FG? Two times 15. Yep, two. Now I know that's 15 plus 30. Did anybody also want to do, I know the whole thing's 100. This part's 40, subtract it. You would have got the other part. You could have done it that way. So what do we got there, 60? And that makes sense, right? 40, 60 gives me the 100. Woo! Mix in a little algebra. Questions, comments? Still got more to do, too. You're going to have a couple of those tonight. Make sure you set up the equation. By the way, hey, this is what I'm talking about, showing work for full credit on the homework. You just give me x equals 15. You're not going to get credit for that. I need to see this here tonight, okay? Just so everyone knows to get credit for the homework, this is what I need to see here. I just can't see x equals 15. They just copied it off the notes. All right, next up, last, uh, last vocabulary term, congruent segments. Two segments that have the same measure. So draw me, what I need you guys, can you guys make two segments for me, AB and CD that look about the same length? All right, so draw me AB. So line segment AB and line segment CD that look about the same length. You don't need to bust out the ruler or anything. Next up, a new symbol, new symbol. So how do I write mathematically in the correct notation? Those two are congruent. They have the same length. Congruent means they have the same length. Well, we all know how to write line segment AB, so go ahead and write that for me symbolically. Write line segment AB symbolically. Leave a little space so I can show you this new symbol, and then write CD symbolically. All right, how do I, what's this symbol that says they're congruent? Anybody know it? We just drop some knowledge on us. All right, I won't waste some time. It's an equal sign. All right, it's an equal sign with a little extra to it equal sign with this little, it's not a call to squiggly, don't do that to me. It's not, that's so mathematical, squiggly. Anybody know what the official name is of this? Begins with a T, ends in Ilda. Begins with a T, ends in Ilda. Tilda, there you go, good job guy, you guys are picking that up, yep. This is, that's called the tilde. But that is the symbol for congruent. The whole thing. Right there. We're going to be using that a ton this year. All right, there's your symbol for congruent. On a diagram, at the start of a problem, you may be told that two line segments are congruent without even this coming up. How do you show on a diagram that they're congruent? Hash marks, watch. If you see this on a diagram, that tells you those two are the same length, they are congruent. 
All right, so put those, ha I call them hash marks. Okay, I call them hash marks, that those two are congruent. Uh, don't put, don't, don't write this down. I just got an, a follow-up question. Let's say in the same diagram, I have another pair of segments that are congruent, but just not congruent to those two. You know what I'm going to put on those instead to show they're the same length? Two hash marks. Good. Yep. So you'd see this instead. Okay. You'd see that. Congruent. Same length. Same length. Last question. Here we go. And then we could start the work here. Whoa, look at my diagram. What do you already know about A, B, and C, D? Use your big boy, big girl words here. Cur, they're congruent. Everyone see the hash marks? So I know they're the same length. I don't know what the length is. I personally don't care what it is, but at least I know what they're the same length. All right, they're the same length. Which one of these statements is incorrect? A, B, congruent to C, D. True or false? A, B, congruent to C. Don't overthink this. True, I put the darn hash marks on there, right? That's what it means, that they're congruent. What's it mean to be congruent? They're the same length. A, B, C, D. What did I tell you earlier? If I drop this segment symbol, what's this mean about them? I'm talking about their lengths. R, A, B, and C, D. Do they have the same lengths? Why? Because they're? There you go. You're starting to use your vocab. That's true. I'm looking for the incorrect one. What do you think? A, C, congruent to B, D. AC congruent to BD. What do we think? Oh, I'm getting a lot of trues. Not too many, though. All right, let me show you using numbers. Don't write this on your paper, though. You told me A, B, and C, D have the same length, correct? Okay, let's say they're five. I don't know, five and five. They have the same length. B, C here, I don't know, looks a little bit longer. I'll call it a length of 10. Ready? How long's AC? How long's AC right now? 15, how long is BD? Are they congruent? There you go. AC and BD are the same length, so process of elimination, AC and CD, that's not true. Okay, that's not true. All right, I threw a lot at you here. All right, got to grind on the homework, ask questions if they come up right now or tomorrow morning, when first thing when we do homework. All right, you'll see it's, uh, oh, part of it's in the packet, right? Part of it's in the packet on the next page. And then the other part is in the textbook. All right, packet work can go in the packet. Textbook work can do go wherever you did it yesterday. All right, let's get going. Phone books out.